I am here with a much requested update on me. And so I'm just going to tell you a little story about from, um, you know, last year um, I, I ended the year working for a, a pet food manufacturer and I was a purchasing clerk. And it was a good job. I, I was working um, anywhere from uh, 40 to 50 hours a week. I made, de you know, um, for this area, decent money. Um, I, I loved my job. I ordered all of the, the meat and all of the canned stuff um, for the whole factory. So, you know, it was a good job. Then come in January, I unexpectedly, just like that, lost my job. They just came in one evening as I was getting ready to go home and had me clock out and walked me out. I got laid off, but they are so afraid, I don't know, of that I might steal a stapler or something, I, or a paper clip, I don't know. But anyway, the, I lost my job devastating. It was absolutely devastating to me. Um, I went through oh, some deep, deep, dark days and um, pretty serious depression. I, you know, I was depressed last year. I, I suffer from depression and it gets pretty bad sometimes. Never enough, never ever have I felt like um, killing myself. Ever. I have never cut myself. I have never done any of that. I have, I, I hurt myself emotionally. I, my house um, is a pigsty most of the time. And when I say pigsty, I mean pigsty. I mean, it's, it's um, dirty and I don't clean. I don't pick up anything. I don't, you know, this is when I'm going through my deepest stuff. I won't get out of my chair for days. Uh, I sleep in my recliner because I toss and turn and am awake most of the night if I sleep in my bed. I Just with my back, I, it's hard for me to sleep in my bed. So I sleep in my recliner. So um, it's actually a, like a love seat recliner. So one chair is completely sky high full of junk that I just didn't put away. And one side... I sleep in. <laughs> my computer's right beside me. My TV's in front of me. You know, I'm a happy camper when I'm sitting there, actually. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Um, some very good friends helped me along the way. Very good friends. I found out that I have very good friends here on YouTube. Um, helped me out, you know, um, made me, made it so I could stay in my apartment made it so I could keep my phone, made it so I could keep doing videos, so I could keep my internet. You know, off and on, people helped me. Okay. I also got a lot of hate for that. Um, personally, um, in a lot of, not a lot on my videos. You know, once in a while I'd get comments, but nothing like that. But I had IMs from people that um, were accusing me of lying and scamming and cheating and stuff like that. Um, private stuff. Uh, I got through that. Uh, like three, four weeks ago, I went for an interview. I got a phone call as I was going to get a few groceries and said, can you come for an interview? I just applied for this job. And so I went. Um, I told her, you know, I'm not dressed for an interview. I'm, you know, in my shorts and my T-shirt. And she says, that's okay, come anyway. And so I talked to her for a few minutes and got hired on the spot. I was hired as a um, casino attendant. Excuse me, I have an itchy nose. Um, casino attendant. Um, 32 hours a week is what she promised me. Sometimes more, you know, if, if need be, but it was mostly 32 hours a week. Uh, I was very grateful. I still am very grateful. But the job turned out to be not what I thought it was going to be. It, um, she turned out to be not what I thought she was going to be. Um, she turned out to be kind of a rude person, 
um, very pushy person. She would push you out of the way almost to get to a customer so she would get that tip or, or to make her look better, that kind of thing. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, we weren't busy at all in the casino. I mean, it was kind of a bust, if you ask me. But So I would help out. I would wash dishes for the bartenders. I would run get food orders. I would help out on the floor, um, waiting on tables, stuff like that. And then they would, you know, help me out with tips you know, partial of their tips, not, not half by any, any means, but they would give me, you know, throw a few bucks my way every once in a while. Casino hours, um, I was always supposed to work either 2.30 to 12.30 or, or it was, I'd either come in at 2.30 or 3.30 in the afternoon and work either until 12.30 in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning, depending on what day it was. On the weekends, they were open until 2 o'clock. So I, um, I would come in at 2.30 or 3.30 and they would send me home at 10 o'clock because there was no business. You know, once in a great while I'd get to stay until 11 o'clock. You know, ooh. So anyway, um, I was only getting, you know, about 25, 24, 25, 26 hours a week. So, I mean, that wasn't enough. I, I can't live on 24 hours a week. So anyway, um, it was just enough so I couldn't get my unemployment. That was it. I got unemployment ever since, you know, I lost my job. But it, it wasn't enough to, so I could get on, it was just enough so I couldn't get unemployment, but not enough to live on. So they make sure that you're right at that poverty level. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, one of the other bartenders and I became pretty close friends, and she hated it there. You know, she just didn't, she wasn't happy with, with the other, you know, the our, our boss. She was, um, or our manager, I should say. There was a boss over her, but um, our manager also was a bartender. So, boy, they got in each other's road all the, all the time, you know, and always were bickering back and forth, and, and you know, really, the manager was really pushing her weight around. And the the girl that and I, um, she was an experienced bartender. So she didn't like to be told, you know, you're doing stuff wrong. You need to step it up. You need this and that. So one night, or she told me about a place that she had worked about four years ago that she had gotten a job offer from. And she told me that they needed daytime bartenders to go and apply. So I, I, I am the, the um, owner of this bar um, that night and, you know, kind of sold myself, told him, told him that I'm always early. I'm always willing to stay late. I'm a good worker. I'm dependable. I'm, I don't steal. I, you know, stuff like that. I kind of sold myself. He says, come on, talk to me tomorrow. So I did. And he hired me. So, um, anyway, going back to the other job, this, this, the first job is supper club. I'll call it supper club. The next one will be bar. Anyway, the supper club, um, my friend had enough one night. Um, she was waiting on a table. They ordered food from the manager. The manager told her to go get the food. Well, she got the wrong food, and it made her look, she felt it made her, her look like a fool. She left crying. She says, I'm done, that's it, and she walked out. So anyway, um, I stayed a few more days. I was afraid, everybody was telling me, don't tell her that you're quitting, because she'll say, we don't need you anymore. Just leave, we don't need you anymore. So I, I didn't want to really do that. So finally on Thursday night, or Wednesday night, I, her and I were alone in the whole place. And so I told her. And she didn't take it as bad as I thought she was going to. The big boss was upset with me. He never, he wouldn't look at me, wouldn't talk to me, nothing. So anyway, you know, which made me feel so guilty. I mean, I felt so guilty because they gave me a chance, you know, 
I had been looking for jobs for months and months, and nobody would hire me because I've got a little bit of a bad history, um, which I'm not going to go into right now. But nobody would hire me. I'm 60 years old. Who wants to hire a 60-year-old, you know, that's slower than the young people that, you know, whatever. Plus, I'm, I'm not skinny. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, anyway... Um, I told her I would work through Friday night. Well, he told her, he says she can work on Thursday night. We don't need her on Friday. See, I was, the, the stories were kind of right. So, um, anyway, I worked through Thursday night and I was done there. Um, to back it up a little bit, uh, my, my job at the bar is going to be um, six days a week. So, it's going to be a lot, but it's still not full time. I mean, I'm still working... Um, two days a week I work two hours a day there's one day I work eight hours one day I work seven and two I work six you know so it's still like 31 hours a week is all but I have a chance to work other hours and I can you know make up my time there I do believe and I'm not making as much money not near as much money I mean quite a bit less I'm making less than than minimum wage but it's a bar job and a waitress and I cook also so but they everybody I've talked to said you make excellent tips there and which you know the the two days that I worked one day I made eight dollars but I had to split my tips with somebody so one day I made eight dollars the next day I made ten so it worked out where I was making you know pretty decent wages an hour so I'm hoping that that this works. If it doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, they have to pay me minimum wage. They have to. If I don't make minimum wage, you know, according to my tips and my, you know, whatever, they have to supplement that. <clears throat> but I do believe I'm going to make over minimum wage. Anyway, let me tell you about this bar. It's, it's, very, it's two bars, actually. There's one on this side, the one I'm mainly working in. It's called Big Dummies. It's it's just a, a long bar. It's got video games or, you know, um, whatever you call it, slot machines and stuff in it. It's got, um, you know, several tables, and it's got a long bar. Okay. So then in the center, right next to it, there is a long area that is um, like concrete, and it's got, um, it's open in the top, you know, so people can smoke out there. It's got tables out there. It's got like, um, what do you call it? The um, bean toss games. It's got a basketball hoop. It's also where they have live music every Friday and Saturday night. So there, there's a big bandstand there also. Um, and then on the other side of that bar is another bar called the Longhorn. And I'll be working there um, my eight hour days on Saturdays. So this coming Saturday is my first day there. Um, I've already worked two days, the, the two-hour days. One was two hours, one was three hours. Uh, I think I'm going to like it. The cooking, cook. you know, when I'm by myself, you have to cook and you have to wait on tables. That's going to be a little tough. And it's been many years since I bartended, and it's been many years since I've cooked. So, I mean, it's just a flat-top cooking service, surface, you know, and they've got fries, and they've got cheese balls, and they've got... Um, They've got several different kinds of burgers. They've got like a pizza burger. They've got cheese strips. They've got four-piece chicken. Um, all that kind of stuff, you know. So, and I've cooked most of it so far. So, I think I'm. I think I'll be okay. I really do. So anyway, that is pretty much up to date. Um, I've had a couple of days off now. I work tomorrow, two to. I mean, eleven thirty to one thirty. Then I have Thursday off. Then Friday, I always work 11.30 to 1.30. And then Saturday is my long day, my eight-hour day. Then I work um, on Sundays. I mean, I work every weekend, but I don't have a life. I mean, outside of my job, I sit at home or I work. So why not work on the weekends? Any day is what's different from one day to the next for me, really. I don't have family. I mean, I have my mom here in town, but her and I are a little bit on the outs right now. Um, you'd have to know my mother. <laughs> um, that would be a whole new video, believe me. 
Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. That If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the down bar. Um, I'll answer anything. So, I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye-bye.